Hey guys, Neil here, and I've got a cool treat for you. My uncle agreed to do this video for me. Um, it's a fantasy football top 20 players. It's not necessarily who should pick in what order, but if you can get him for good value, that's the way to go. These are the 20 best players in, in our opinion. I do a little thing afterwards and compare my picks to his and why. It gives you a reason to why you pick them where and stuff like that and why you value them that certain way. But yeah, guys, it's a cool little top 20 video um, on who you should take and where. And why? So, anyways, guys, enjoy the video. How you all doing? My name is Jimmy Winslow. I'm kind of the uh, fantasy king of Idaho. I've won seven titles in a very intense uh, IDP league that we've been doing for 20 plus years. I probably know more about fantasy sports than all of you combined. So, going into this year, here's my top 20 must-have. For a bar league, not an IDP league, because most of you are too stupid to know what that even is, let alone play it. But here's my top 20. Number one, straight up, if you don't draft Ezekiel Elliott first overall, you're an idiot. He is got the biggest upside we've seen probably since the days of the super running backs of LT and Alexander and, and even Emmett Smith and Priest Holmes. He could go for 2000 if he gets enough. And he definitely um, is going to be the number one player. He might not be the number one player, but his upside's way too high to pass. Number two, Mr. Solid, 1,800 yards, almost a shoe in. If you want to be safe and or if you want to be upside, you got to go Antonio Brown. Probably the best receiver fantasy-wise we've seen since Jerry Rice. Odell Beckham's number three. That's just all upside and touchdowns. Um... It, there's a pretty big gap, though, between Brown and Beckham. So that tells you where Elliott is at. Number four, Todd Gurley, though I have some doubts about him. He's still going to get all the touches. He's going to get some touchdowns. And if golf can do anything at quarterback, he'll get his 1,500 yards. I really like the upside of Lamar Miller at five. I think uh, switching teams on a team like that that's going to use him, he could go for 1,500 pretty easily, at least 1,500 combined. Six, Julio Jones, my buddy behind me, Steve, is a huge Jones fan. Me, not so much, but he's definitely the number three receiver on the board. Um, so if you get, you know, middle of that first round, he's a pretty solid pick. My seventh player, 14 touchdowns last year. It ain't going to go backwards. Mr. Allen Robinson is a super pick. I might even bump him ahead of Jones if you're looking for some touchdowns in a touchdown league. But he is solid. No question. Number eight, Mr. Peterson. He's definitely going to get some touches, even with Bradford coming in. The only reason he's this slow, obviously age. Number nine, Le'Veon Bell. Once he's back, he's the man. He'd be much higher, maybe two or three, if he didn't have that suspension. But remember this. I just did a bar league draft. No matter what, the greatest handcuffed in the history of pro football since we've been drafting, you got to get D'Angelo. And if that means getting him in the fourth round, get him if you take Le'Veon. Number 10, I think, well, yeah, number 10, David Johnson, I think I think he's a little high on most boards. And my reasoning behind that is that explosion at the end of last year, Chris Johnson wasn't around. And I think Chris Johnson is going to get some carries back. I think Chris Johnson will at least do 500 yards, maybe 700, and that means Johnson ain't getting 15. Though he's a solid 10. Good upside. Number 11. Depends on how big you want to go with the differential at a position. Gronk's way ahead of everybody else at tight end. Though Jordan Reed and Greg Olson are solid. If you're going to go that way, then Gronk's your guy. Number 12. Maybe the most underrated player in this whole thing. DeAndre Hopkins. Solid, solid player. Especially if you can get him in the second round. Which he's dropping in a lot of boards. Because he's not as big a name as some of these other guys. But he's just like Lamar Miller. Solid pick. 13, Des Bryant. Solid pick. Going to get his touchdowns. Obviously, I dropped him a little bit like everybody else. Without Romo throwing to, to him, he's a little bit down. Still, he's going to get some touchdowns. He's going to get 1,200 yards. 14, the number one quarterback on the board. Still, it's got to be Cam. Just because you know he's not going to back away from the rushing touchdowns. If he can throw for 4,200 yards, he's easily the number one quarterback. And Benjamin's back. Don't forget that. Benjamin's back. Number uh, 15, Jamal Charles. 
solid. He might miss a few snaps here and there because of his age, but he's still going to be the workhorse down in Kansas City. He's the man, so he's solid there. 16, Russell Wilson, barely over 17, Aaron Rodgers, coin flip. Can't go wrong with either one of them. They're both solid. Quarterbacks are interesting. You definitely want to drop them lower into the draft if you can. But then again, you don't want to miss on any of the big three. Big Ben's all right, but he's not as good as these three. So you want to take one of them when you get the chance. Number 18, Doug Martin. Second in the league in rushing last year. 1,400 yards. I don't see that going too much backwards. He's about as safe a pick for yardage as you can get. If he could get any catches or touchdowns, it'd be way higher on the list. Number 19, LaShawn McCoy. I see a bounce back year. Kind of risky, but at, you know, middle of third round, solid pick. 20, Andrew Luck. That's the next to the best quarterbacks. Barely over big man. Not a high inside, but a lot of the other receivers and running backs at this point are just preference. There's no real hierarchy there. So might as well take luck if you get a chance. And my super sleeper pick of the draft, you're going to be able to get him somewhere in the 60 range. Somebody's got to make up those yardage that Calvin Johnson's leaving behind. Golden Tate's going to get a lot of them. But Marvin Jones is my super sleeper pick. Look for a 1,200-yard year with 8 to 10 touchdowns. That's all I got for you. Good luck in your drafts. And go Highland Brigade. Okay, guys. As you, as you just saw, my Uncle Jimmy, um, I'm going to give a little background to that. He's been in this fantasy football league for 20 years, like he said. But it's such an in-depth league. It has IDPs, which are individual defensive players. They, it's a keeper league, it's a dynasty league if you want to call it that, which it is. Um, it's a pretty special draft. I'm actually going to make a video about it, exactly how it's set up, to show you guys if you want to set up your own. Um, it'll probably come out later today or tomorrow, well, depending on when I can get it up. But it'll explain the league and, um, excuse me, you'll be able to take him a lot more serious with what he said. He does know what he's talking about. He's pretty cocky, but he does know his fantasy football. He's not an idiot, but... Anyways, I'm here to show you guys, to do my top 20 um, and my sleeper pick along with a bust potential, my biggest bust potential, but I just want to kind of compare the lists. He had Elliott going one. I agree 100%. If you don't think Ezekiel Elliott's the number one pick, then um, uh, he does have some, obviously, some risk, but his upside is crazy higher than anybody you can imagine. It's It's by far... It should be the easiest pick in the draft. I, it doesn't matter who's at quarterback at all. I'm at two. He had Antonio Brown. Um, I, I have three receivers that are going consecutively, but I have Julio Jones as the number two guy. Julio Jones has been very consistent with his um, yardage totals. Um, I think he'll get ten touchdowns. Um, Matt Ryan's falling off a little bit, but I don't see Julio doing that. Um, Julio, I would love to see get 2,000 yards, and I think – if there's any receiver in the league that could do it, I think Julio Jones can do it. Um, I'm not sure if he'll do it, but that'd be a bold prediction. But I have Julio Jones, number two. Um, if you can grab him, grab him. Um, Antonio Brown, number three. Um, obvious reasons, he's very consistent. He's a guy you can rely on, which if you're picking high, um, I always try to lean for the guys that you can um, almost guarantee. I hate to use that word, but um, you can almost count on them barring injury. And even some getting injury, you're going to get a solid amount of points. Odell Beckham, four. Those are the three receivers that I like a lot. Um, I, I'm i not a fan of Odell Beckham, but his numbers speak for themselves. He's great. Um, he had, obviously, Brown, Beckham, and then Gurley. Um, and then five was Lamar Miller. At five, I have Le'Veon Bell. But like he was saying, you really want to um, handcuff D'Angelo Williams. I can't say that enough. I was doing a draft the other night, and um, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I may have had a few beers or so, and I thought I drafted him, and I didn't, but um, you have to get um, D'Angelo Williams. It's almost a for sure thing. If you have one of the two, you're going to get a bunch of yards. It's that simple. Um, at six, he had Julio Jones, and I have Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson, especially now that um, they've made that trade to Sanchez, or not Sanchez, <laughs> Sam Bradford, and... Uh, Peterson's going to be relied on even more than he usually is to carry that team, and they're going for it. So I think Peterson's a great pick. He had Allen Robinson at seven. This is where I put Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley I'll get to a little more, more later. Later, um, 
He was solid last year. He's got a lot of potential. Just riding on that potential thing. But I think the thing with Gurley is um, he's got a rookie quarterback, and people teams know they're going to rely on him um, a lot, and that, that scares me a little bit. He had eight, Peterson. I have DeAndre Hopkins a little higher than he did. Hopkins is a great value pick. Um, he doesn't quite have the quarterback, but he hasn't, and he still put up decent numbers. And you can almost always land him in the second round, and I think he's the best player in the second round unless, obviously, you get one of those guys before it. Um, nine, he had Le'Veon Bell. I have Gronkowski a little higher, and the reason that is is a Gronkowski is by far the best tight end. And the reason you'd want to take him that high is because there's such a gap between the two. If you have tight end set, you don't have to worry about it at all, period. You're getting more points than you should um, from tight end position on the average. Whereas that's why you have running backs a little higher than receivers because there's there was 20-something receivers that um, caught for over 1,000 yards where there were only seven running backs, I believe, that went over 1,000 yards. So running backs, you need to get that guy that's that more important. So that's the point with Gronkowski. He's that far above everybody, and so he's that kind of special guy. I wouldn't put another tight end in the top 20, maybe not even the top 30. Um, but, yeah, that's that. Um Number 10, he's got David Johnson. Number 10, I've got um, Doug Martin. Doug Martin should be um, great. He's got consistent yards. Now, if only he could get some, like he said, touchdowns or some catches. He's never been known for his receiving, but um, he just needs some red zone carries. And I believe that contract offer was kind of like a show of respect and that they believe in him. And so, yeah. 11, he had Gronk. Um, 11, I have Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson um, is... Bortles, number one receiver, and it's on an up and up team. I, I don't see him going any worse. So if you get more points for a touchdown or or something like that in your league, then I, I'd target Allen Robinson a little higher. Um, he's got 12 DeAndre Hopkins, which is great value, obviously. I have Lamar Miller. I haven't moved down a little bit. Um, it's always been hard for me to buy on Lamar Miller. He always breaks everybody's heart. So. But he's on a new team. Um, they might rely on him because, obviously, a new quarterback and a new system and stuff. So... We'll see. I, that one's a tough one. He had Des Bryant. I thought Des Bryant was a little high, but then again, I put Jamal Charles at 13, so that might be a little high. He's probably not going to be ready for week one, but Jamal Charles is a workhorse, and this is workhorse entertainment, so um, I've always liked Jamal Charles. 14, Cam Newton. I have LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy, um, who else do they have, really? I mean, they've got a couple guys like Reggie Bush, but Reggie Bush isn't going to last a week if he gets too many carries, but um, yeah, LaShawn McCoy, he's a really low, and you might be able to get him third round or so, and third round was great value for LaShawn McCoy. How many times can I... But yeah, like I said, LaShawn McCoy. Um, sorry, my camera cut out. But 15, he had Jamal Charles, great value. I have Cam Newton. I moved him down a little bit. He's by far the number one quarterback, I believe. But quarterbacks, you don't really want to target before the third round at best. Maybe Cam Newton in the second if you're really, if all these other guys are gone. Um, but I get it, Cam Newton, if he throws for 4,000 yards, he's going to get you the rushing touchdowns and the rushing yards. I don't believe he's going to be number one in rushing yards for quarterbacks. I think Tyrod Taylor will be, but it won't be that big a difference. 16, Russell Wilson. I've got Andrew Luck. I'm a Colts fan. I'm, Andrew Luck, I feel like he's got to put up big numbers if he wants to carry that team, which he can. 17, he had Rodgers. I've got Russell Wilson. It's kind of a coin flip between those three for me. And it was a coin flip between the two for him. He had Doug Martin at 18. I have Des Bryant at 18. I moved Des Bryant down for the obvious reasons. Who's he got thrown to him? Dax Prescott does look good, but it's hard to buy into it. Des Bryant will get his 1,000 yards receiving, 10 touchdowns, which is great. And But the problem with Des is he gets a little overdrafted and stuff. With If he had Romo, he deserves to be drafted where he's drafted, but he doesn't have Romo, so, yeah, I can't see it. He had McCoy. I have Rodgers. Rodgers is right in that mix with those other quarterbacks. I can't blame you for taking him between Luck, Russ, Wilson, and Rodgers, but you should never take any of those three before Cam Newton, unless you're just a big fan. Um, but, yeah, he had Luck at 20. I have David Johnson. I moved David Johnson down because um, he did all that without at the end of the season without Chris Johnson, and I know Chris Johnson's going to be taking away some of the some of his carries. And so, um, yeah, we'll see where that goes with that, but... Yeah, that's the biggest reason I can't buy into David Johnson. He's great. He's good value at 20th, 20th overall. But, yeah, um, I'm going to do a sleeper. 
but it, it goes in pretty much with what he's what um, Jimmy was saying about the Detroit Lions. Uh, Matt Stafford's going to be throwing the ball. Um, Abdullah's got some value there, but I'm not picking Abdullah here. You can get him somewhat late, but he went Marvin Jones. I'm going to go Golden Tate. Golden Tate's the other receiver. He put up some big numbers last year, and I think you can get him after the 50th pick, and I'm going my sleepers after the 50th and the 50s, so I think you should go Golden Tate if you get a chance in like the fifth round or maybe even late four, but yeah, that's where I would go there. Um, but biggest bust, bust potential, I wanted to add that. Um, I forgot to tell him to put that in, but biggest bust potential would be Todd Gurley, um, and the reason that being is what I said before. Um, he's coming off a pretty good finish to a last year um, for the most part. He's got a rookie quarterback, and uh, it's hard for me to buy in because they're going to rely heavy on him, and teams know that. Unless that rookie quarterback comes out of the gates booming, um, it's going to be hard because teams are going to focus on him, and they're going to be able to stop him. And Yeah, that's pretty much what I've got there, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, and um, yeah, this... I hope you guys um, have a fun and successful fantasy season. Look for the next video on more picks and, um, yeah, that video about the other leagues. So it should be a lot of fun. I'll talk to you.